Welcome to our first video on the channel and today we're kicking it off with a fast charger review. There's been a lot of talk about, you know, um, driving non-Tesla vehicles and how charging is and if it's any good. And, you know, in America, they have a very good uh, American network called Electrify America. We have something similar called Electrify Canada, I guess it's the same company. Um, but today we will not focus on that because those chargers are quite far away from where I live in, um, in British Columbia, Canada. So today we're going to focus on our homegrown brand, which is Petro Canada. So if you guys are not from Canada, let me just give you a little bit of a, uh, a introduction to what Petro Canada is. So it's a chain of gas stations throughout the country. Um, it used to be a crown corporation many, many years ago, which meant it was, it was owned by the Canadian government. And I think that's why it was called Petro Canada and still is, right? Um, but it's been a, a private company for a while now, uh, owned by Suncor Energy, which is our one of our biggest energy companies in Canada. And in 2019, they announced that they are planning to build a cross Canada network of fast EV chargers. Um, they have two types. One is the Chatamo with a max speed of 100 kilowatts and they have a CCS charger with a max speed of 350. So all across the country you can just drive from Victoria, British Columbia on the west coast all the way down to the east coast to Halifax, Nova Scotia using only Petro Canada EV chargers. So today we are driving to Langley, British Columbia to test out the Petro Canada EV charger over there. Um, it's the closest one to me. It takes about 20 minutes to get there. But today, since it's a pretty cold day, it's only 13 degrees Celsius outside. I will put that up in Fahrenheit for you uh, uh, American viewers. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of a longer way around because I want to take the highway, warm up the battery, so that I give it the best conditions possible. So now, I've recently purchased a uh, electric vehicle. You are now inside a 2021 Kia Soul EV. I've got the top spec trim with the largest battery available. And, uh, you know, I've been enjoying it so far immensely. It's It's been such a joy to charge and not fill with gas. And here in British Columbia, Canada, um, the government is trying to push the adoption of electric vehicles. So there's quite a few on the roads. Obviously the most prevalent are Tesla Model 3s. Everybody seems to be buying one. Uh, and, uh, you know, you still get to see the occasional Leaf, the occasional Kia. And uh, I decided to go for the Kia for various reasons. I'll get, that in, get into that in a different video because it's kind of interesting how, how British Columbia does it with rebates. So um, I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about that today, but I will make a video. Uh, probably the next one will be a video just about um, how the whole rebate system here in BC works, because it's kind of interesting. So anyways, we are going to Langley and in Langley we will um, charge at the, at the, fast charger over there sorry i'm driving and talking and see how good it is you know people have reported that the chargers are not always available that there's some problems with them that you know um people have had card reader issues because you are you know it's it's a new system right and for a while there it was free to charge so a lot of people use it obviously um, but they weren't getting the speeds that they were hoping to get with, with uh, Petro Canada EV chargers. So today we're going to try to figure out what the situation is like, if it's any good, and if I recommend it or not. Like I said, we have a lot of different companies here in Canada. You know, Petro Canada is only one of those companies. But I think that the premise of building a whole cross-country um, Network. I'll put up a map here because it's it's completed. It's done. You can you can drive today. So I'll put a map here for you guys to see how it stretches all across Canada. 
and it's amazing. I mean, you know, I have family in Ontario. It would be really nice to go and see them and drive my EV and charge at Petro Canada. Okay, so that's, you know, perfect if it works, if it works. So we'll see today what kind of speeds we get. We will see how easy it is to start charging, see if the card reader issue pops up, like many people have said, and just generally give an overview about how um, the charging works with Petro Canada EV chargers. All right, so um, I'll flip the camera around so you guys can see what I see, because you know, BC is very beautiful, but today is a bit chilly and a bit rainy. So you guys can see a little bit of, of, of the road getting there to the charger and we'll pick it up when we get to the charger and start charging. Right, guys as you can see we have arrived at the fast charger there's two of them one is here and one is here and now I've got soul spy on here on my other phone and let's have a look at our battery so it's I don't know if you guys can see that it's not gonna focus pretty well it's about 16 to 18 degrees depending on the cell um, so that should that should, in theory, give us a nice charge. So our max temperature was 18 when we were coming here. Um, right now it's 15 to 14 degrees. So let's try and um, charge and see what we get. So, as you guys can see, 350 is the CCS, and then there is a Chatamo for 100. All right, so we have the card reader, we have the display. So now let's try to one-handed plug this in. Hopefully, we can do that one-handed. Maybe, maybe not. Ah, there we go. That clicked in. All right, communicating with vehicle. All right, card reader works. So that's the first thing. As you guys can see, 27 cents per minute and they pre-authorized $25 of your card. So let's do, let's do Apple Pay. You can enter your phone number if you want to get, you know, notifications, but it doesn't matter. We skip it. All right. Let's have a look. See what happens. It's 
Still initializing. Still initializing. Or initiating, sorry. Okay, there we go. We got 9% on arrival. And let's see what we're gonna get. So, it's up to 32, 36, 40, 48, 52 so far. 52 so far. So I've set it until 80. So that's the test today. How much it's going to cost us and how long does it take to get to 80%. Right now we're at 53 kilowatts. That's what the car is telling me. Um, and we should be finished in about 55 minutes to 80. Um, ideally, what I should be getting right now is around 70. Um, that's what this car can pull at this state of charge and this temperature. So we will see if we uh, we get this bumped up to to more than uh, than uh, right now we're getting at 54, 55. It's coming up a little bit. And then Soul Spy is telling me uh, we're getting about 50 right now which is about 352 volts or 141 amps. So that should be interesting to see how this will wrap up. What's the battery temperature right now? We're looking at about 17 to 18 degrees. Um, yep. Oh, now it's a little bit more, 22 to 23 degrees. So it's ramping up the temperature. So that's good. I mean, ideally that's what you want. I've noticed that if I if I just drive fast and charge out, uh, 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 deplete the battery faster before I get to the charger and warm it up, I, I charge much quicker than I would normally do. So I would suggest that what everybody does. Because honestly, you know, with, uh, with Tesla's, they precondition the car before you arrive at a supercharger, but with a Kia like this, you need to do the preconditioning kind of yourself. So just before you get there to the charger, just, you know, go a little bit faster and you're going to condition the battery this way. But we are still only, only, only pulling 55, 56. I wonder if we're going to actually get to around 70. I'm hoping yes, that would be nice. I mean, the battery now, uh, 25 degrees. So we should be, you know, on our way to about 70. We'll see. Anyways, this location is pretty awesome. Um, there is a obviously a gas station attached to this because Petro Canada, like I mentioned, is a gas station, first and foremost. And there is also a Tim Hortons. So I'm going to go and get a coffee. Okay, this is just weird. Eight minutes and 29 seconds into the charge. I only got 7.4 kilowatt hours and then it suddenly stopped. I don't know why. All right, so let's unplug. See, I didn't even was able to get a battery. Uh, what do I mean? A battery, a coffee, yes. Coffee is a battery for me, I guess. Wow, that's not good. All right, we're gonna unplug and, and, and see what we can do with this, but yeah. That's not good, is it? Okay, let's try initiating the charge through the app. So we're in number two. Okay, we're gonna do Apple Pay. And let's see if that initiates the charger and it's gonna work. We'll see. Okay, so it's been authorized. I can hear the charger turn on maybe the card reader didn't work i'm not sure okay so we're back up charging so we got to 19 percent all right we're ramping back up I hope we get to about 55, that's what it stopped at. So we're at 53, that's okay. So we will see how this will work. There's always a second one over there to try and see if it will work or not. Not sure. 
Anyway, let's, let's give it a few minutes and see if it will work or not. This is a very nice location. You have everything. You have a supermarket, you have a Tim Hortons. So we're gonna go to Tim Hortons, get some coffee right now. So we can charge our batteries. Got the coffee. So this is Tim Hortons right here. Okay, let's go back to see uh, if we are charging or not. I can hear it's working. So that's a good sign. Okay, so far so good. 53 kilowatt hours. So far $1.35, I believe the first charge that stopped was 229. So we'll see at the end how much it's going to be in total. All right, so far so good. Good news, good news. We are now at 76 kilowatt hours charging speed, which is awesome. Battery is at 36%. So far we've gained 173 dollars, uh, kilometers of range. So this is awesome. I mean, 32 minutes to completion, not bad. Let's just see really quickly what Soul Spy says in terms of how fast are we charging. Yeah, 74.5 or uh, 371.7 volts or 200.2 amps so that is awesome i can just hear the air conditioning cooling the battery it's uh, working overtime oh we're going to 78 a little bit so that's awesome news awesome 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 because i was uh apprehensive a little bit because i've read so many horror stories um and people saying that it doesn't actually charge that fast okay we had to switch chargers unfortunately because that one kept shutting off and shutting off so now we're on 36 kilowatt hours which is not very fast um i'm gonna go up to 50 i think and leave there is no point and then we have a nice Taycan charging really really quick at over 200 kilowatt hours so that's what you need i guess to get good charging speeds or fast speeds anyways so I'll check back in when we're done. We have dropped to, I believe it is 21 kilowatt hours. Okay. At 63%, um, there is another Kia Soul old one on the Chatamo charging. But yeah, this is totally unacceptable. My battery is at 27 degrees on average. I should really be getting more. Well, now we jumped up to 43. That is so weird. I don't know. There's just too many fluctuations. Nothing is stable here, unfortunately. Which makes it very super frustrating. Super, super frustrating to get any kind of decent charge. I mean, that one was great. I got 78, I think the most, but also it kept disconnecting all the time. So I had to connect a few times. This one at least is steady. The connection is, is all good, but I'm not getting the speed that I should be getting. So yes, not great. Okay, we're getting closer. I decided to just stay, get my 80% and see how, uh, how fast we can finish this up in. So that's uh, now to 23 kilowatts at 77%. So far this session costs $10.26 and we've been here 38 minutes. So the cost is per minute. So at least if you have a fast car like that guy with a Taycan, he was out of here in 10 minutes with 50% charge. So that works for him, right? But when it's so slow, it does cost a little bit more so we'll be finishing at 80% but the location here is pretty nice i have to say um, if you have to hang out for over an hour as long as we've been here it's pretty good place to to hang out and uh, you have everything if you're hungry you can have tim hortons drink something and then there is a small plaza here there is also another one over there so yeah, good location to charge, but I just wish it was better. I wish that one worked, 
better so that we could have kept going at 70 like we were but anyways we will have to try other Petro Canada EV stations and see if it, if it improves or not but yeah almost done almost done two percent left and once I do my summary at the end I will calculate exactly how much it all costs um, and how long it all took so stay tuned for that all right guys quick recap after the charging session over at uh, Petro Canada EV um, so it started promising obviously uh, as you probably saw we started charging at 78 I think it was the highest that it went to um, and if we sustained that for the whole charge that would have been awesome and I wouldn't have any kind of issues with it however um, what happened was the first charger disconnected after I think about three minutes or something like that I paid about two dollars 29 cents before it disconnected okay so then Obviously, if it disconnected, you have to reconnect again, pay again, and then start charging again. And obviously, the second time, um, it, uh, it, it, it went okay, right? Um, and then it disconnected once more. So now we're looking at two disconnections. So I thought, okay, maybe we will change to the second charger because there's two. So I moved my car over. And um, unfortunately, at that time, I think the battery cooled or I don't know what happened. Maybe the other charger isn't um, as capable as the first one was. And then it dropped down to about 36 kilowatt hours, which obviously is very, very slow. So the whole procedure from arriving there until finishing my charge took over an hour, an hour and a half to be exact. OK, and. The total cost because I counted everything I'll show the screenshots that I have here because the first one I just paid with the card so I didn't have um, a receipt for that but a total of eighteen dollars and fifty three cents for those three charges right so yeah um, I'm not really that happy I wish the first time we connected and we got those speeds we would have stayed connected and we could have charged at 70 as much as possible right the curve you know and, and finish the charge as as expected however that didn't work so we had to change chargers so obviously right now uh if you don't have any other choice then yes you can go with petro canada ev chargers but if you have another choice like you know electrify canada or charge point or even our here bc hydro the ones that give you a steady 50 kilowatt hours right those are much better options right now so i think petro canada needs to figure this out i'm sure they will this is not you know a huge issue i i think they just need to calibrate the the chargers and, and make sure everything is working but once they do i think it will be a viable option you know once when we were there um one of the uh, one of the uh, other chargers that i left a uh, taycan showed up right as you guys can see and he was charging at over 200 kilowatts so amazing he was there 10 minutes got 50 percent charge and left and paid three dollars and that's what it's about right if you pay by the minute the faster the charge the better obviously with my kia um soul ev i i get 70 the most but at least i would like to maximize that 70 if at all possible so i'm hoping i'm hoping that um petro canada ev um makes a better i don't know software adjustment or or something needs to be done to 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 make to make the charging a bit more stable and and predictable then it's a viable option i mean i would love for example to to take a taycan from victoria bc all the way to halifax and just use petro canada ev chargers that would be amazing and that would be a cool video too and, and an amazing road trip right to go through canada the whole country basically in an electric car which many years ago not even many like two years ago even three years ago would have been unthinkable but now we can do it if we want to so i hope i hope petro canada they have a good product their locations are amazing there's always food to eat there's restrooms there's everything you need if you're on a road trip so i do hope 
that they somehow managed to fix whatever issues they have with those chargers. Like the second charger also didn't accept my card, so I had to use the app. But from now on, I'm just going to use the app anyway. I think it's better because I get an email receipt and all that. And I think it's just, it's, it's good to keep track of costs, right? But $18 for going from, from I think it was, uh, how much did we start with? Less than 10, right? It was something like 8% or something like that to 80 and paying $18, um, way, way, way too much. I, I don't think that it should cost that much. So overall, not very positive, but I do think that eventually um, Petro Canada is going to fix this and it's going to make this a viable network. Like I said, it would be amazing to travel all across Canada, just use Petro Canada charging stations and, and, and know that they work and, and, and be predictable. So that's what I'm hoping for. Um, the next review, I, I really want to check out um, uh, Electrify Canada, which is, you know, Electrify America, but just in Canada. Um, I really want to check out that charger. There is a great one in Squamish, which is just north of Vancouver. Uh, so that's what would be the next trip. And next week, probably, I will have some time to go and do that. Because people say that those chargers, they can sustain 70 kilowatt hours for a while um, if you're charging a Kia or a Hyundai car so i'm excited that'll be that'll be good to see and um yeah so that's it for today i'm gonna leave you uh with a little bit of a scene going home from the charger uh and and you can see the beautiful landscape that we have here in in, in british columbia canada all right guys um make sure to like the video if you liked it uh dislike if you didn't and i would appreciate it if you would subscribe uh, so that uh, it would motivate me to do more videos like this and maybe something different too in the future. Maybe some road trips or something like that in my Kia uh, Soul EV. All right. Thanks, guys. And talk to you next time. Bye.